What's up guys, Doug Polk here, and welcome to launch week for my new Heads at No Limit course, The End Boss System. To celebrate the launch of this course, I'm gonna be posting YouTube content every single day, all week. So even if you're not interested in the course at all, you're still gonna get a lot of high level poker analysis to help your game absolutely for free. The End Boss System, over 50 hours of content from myself and Fabian Adler between the main course and the add-on course inside the arena, a, a walkthrough of live heads up poker as well. You know, I feel pretty confident in being able to say that I believe I'm the best heads up number player to have ever played the game. I think nowadays there are a few players better than me, but if you look at the totality of my career, I do feel quite strongly that my resume shows that I am the best player to have played this game. I created a course seven years ago that talked about my personal style of how I got to the top of Heads Up No Limit, but I really kind of reached a point where I felt like those strategies, frankly, were outdated and wrong, and I wanted to update this to the absolute top of the line correct strategies in 2023. The course goes through all of the stuff I used to prep for Negranu, uh, all of the optimal preflop sizes and ranges. This thing has its own range viewer with all of, of the uh, all of the ranges and sizes to use preflop. It has every optimal single size flop for every flop that you can imagine. In fact, it's all of the flops. Uh, we then have notes for every turn, the way that you should be categorizing into optimal single size turn. And then we go into river splits and how to play uh, two different size rivers. We walk you through the entire framework of Heads of No Limit. Fabian does uh, more of the nitty gritty technical street by street, uh, position by position analysis. I walk you through more examples and database sample review. We conclude every section with a full breakdown of uh, a bunch of hands played in that position. We go introduction, small blind, single raise pop, big blind, single raise pot, three bet pop, both positions, four pop, both positions. And then we conclude with some play and explain as well as a 12 hour add on course of which I'm in every single hour breaking down how to play a live heads up challenge. Look, if you want to play poker at a really high level, this is one of, if not the all-time best courses created for No Limit Hold'em. This is absolutely everything cards on the table, how to play exactly like I do and exactly like Fabian does at Heads of No Limit. And frankly, even if you are not a Heads of No Limit player, there is tons of value for you inside this course uh, to learn how to think about poker the correct way and make you an end boss. So if you want to check that out, the price is $9.99. I will put a link in the description below. And on that note, let's go ahead and jump into this week's hand from Hustler Casino Live. You said you were down here last too. <laughs> here, yeah. Nick, Nick, give me, right, oh, okay, no, no. Yeah. Let's go. Heads up. And Queens against Ace King again for Ryan. Our hand begins at 100, 200, 400 with an ante and an $800 straddle. It's a little bit tough to see exactly what happened here pre-flop because they were cutting between scenes. But either way, we're looking at a spot here where Charles has opened the hijack to 3,000 with ace-8 offsuit. A little bit of a loose open, I think, here uh, in the hijack. I do think in the cutoff, this hand is going to be probably an open, but in the hijack is likely a fold. Uh, Nick Airball looks down ace king of diamonds. Definitely a hand you want to be three betting with. A very strong hand indeed. And he makes it 10k to go. I think this is actually a very good size from Nick in position. You don't want to go too big here. You don't have to go too big here. And it lets you play more hands for this size. Action on Ryan Feldman here in the blinds on pocket queens. This is a very uncomfortable spot on about 130 big blinds here with pocket queens. Out of position against the pre-flop three better. I think, you know, look, like for a long time, I I've advocated to just kind of play raise or fold strategies out of position. I do think you could build a pretty small flatting range in their hands like pocket queens, jacks, uh, ace queen suits, some suited broadways, some other mid pairs, maybe some occasional jack 10 suited, 76 suit type stuff could be a way to build that range out. But I don't mind the idea of just playing four better fold here. The problem with flatting is you let the other player into the pot. You're going to get five bet a lot. So I don't mind the idea of just making it 27,000 here with any hand Ryan wants to play and foregoing having flats here at all. That said, I'm sure flatting does happen here. It's just kind of complicated to play. So I do not hate the decision that Ryan makes, which is just a call. Action back over to Charles with ace eight offsuit. This is not the kind of hand you're looking to play a multi-way pot with, and he gets out of the way, and let's take a flop. Sorry, Ryan, but I'm rooting for Nick. That's fine. 
And wow, this time we're gonna see a flop instead of just going all in here. And top two for Nick. The flop comes ace, king, queen. A disaster flop for Nick Airball here, flopping top two, but he's up against a set. Feldman now with the set, checks it over as he should with all of his hands. And Airball's gotta decide how he wants to play this. Now, typically speaking, these these Broadway type flops, flops like small bet sizes at low frequencies and look to barrel setting up for a river all in. Airball decides to go that route and bets 4,000, maybe even a little too small considering these guys have 107,000 behind, but still within the realm of being reasonable. Over to Ryan now with pocket queens. Question becomes, should you develop some flop raises here? And I think I would just play all of my hands out of check call. The logic is that I think an air ball should have a lot more hands like aces and kings or ace king preflop. Even pocket queens should be a little more prevalent, I believe, for air ball than it should be for Ryan. So I think in this situation, uh, Ryan should just play all of his hands as a check call. And he decides to go ahead and check call and we take a turn. A set for Ryan. And it's just a small bet and a call. This pot could get a lot bigger. Jack-10, of course, out there. But these two hands are both so strong. Cool. Total rainbow board. Ryan just calls again. The turn comes a six, completing the rainbow. There's not going to be a flush in this one. Now with 28,000 out there or so, 32,000 out there, Airball has to make a decision. What kind of size does he want to bet on the turn? And does he want to play for all of the money? Typically speaking, when pots are this large, there's roughly about 3x pot left behind, you want your turn bet size to be geometric. That means your turn bet will be the same percentage of pot as your river bet. What that means to you, the layman person trying to learn poker, you want to bet a pretty big bet so that you can go all in on the river. Airball decides to bet 16,000 or half pot. I just, I really feel like this is a little bit too small. I think that Nick needs to be betting something more like 26,000, 25,000 uh, to set himself up for a river jam. Ryan's not going to have hands like aces or kings. He can definitely have hands like ace-queen suited or king-queen suited, uh, ace-jack suited, ace-ten suited. Uh, and then while he might occasionally have pocket queens, that's a risk you're going to have to take. I think you want to set yourself up for a situation where you can play for all of the money. Anyway, he does bet just half pot here. Now over to Ryan. Again, uh, I think we have a spot where it makes a lot of sense to not have any raises at all. You don't want to uh, raise in this situation if Nick is bluffing. You want to let him thin value bet. And you also, if he does have a strong hand, you're going to get the money anyway. So there's really no reason to develop any raises. Also, it's kind of hard to think of hands that even might want to bluff. Like maybe Ryan could raise the turn here when he has a hand like Jack-10 suited or maybe a hand like 10s where he blocks the straight. I really don't think that's very good though. I think it's better to just play his range out of check call, which he does decide to do. And let's take a river. Nick could spew a little bit. Oh, Kings full of aces now for Nick Airball, and Ryan makes a full house as well. What a cooler. I don't think I'm folding, but that was like the stupidest river. Wow, and Ryan seems to have a pretty good read on what's going on here. I mean, the river comes a brutal board pairing king, giving Nick Airball a boat and improving over Ryan's full house. Ryan checks it over, and now Airball decides to go ahead and go all in. But you can see it's a little bit of an awkward size. It's actually bigger than the pot when he decides to jam. This would be a pretty unattractive spot to bluff. There are some hands that could maybe make sense for Airball to bluff with, something like Jack-9 suited, 10-9 suited, maybe getting in there. But it's kind of hard to think of all too many hands that could like to bluff in this situation. Anyway, Airball does decide to jam. I do like to, the decision to jam and try and stack Ryan. And unfortunately for Ryan here with pocket queens, you'd have to make an insane hero fold to be able to let this go. He could have ace-king maybe pre-flop, although those mainly will four bet. Uh, he could have king-queen suited, although there's only one combo of that. Uh, there's really not that many hands. Uh, and by the way, that's not possible because ace-king of diamonds blocks it. But of course, Feldman does not know that airball has that. Anyway, I do think in this situation with pocket queens, you just have to sigh, call it off and hope that you're good. Unfortunately for Ryan, he's not good, and uh, this is gonna be pretty brutal. 
boat over boat. Whatever, you deserve it. I forgot oh. it. You got it. Oh, he's gonna slow roll in. Second, I mean, how does he get cooler at every hand? Nice slow roll. Great. I knew he, I knew he had it. $235,000 pot for Nick Airball. Just to torture him. A huge, huge cooler. Gets the best of Ryan Feldman. Sick. A tough beat there for Feldman, but I'm sure he takes it in stride. You know, I can tell you working on a stream production, losing $100,000 on a river, that's only going to take you, I don't know, years to make back. So good luck, Ryan, uh, making back your money. Although you probably are getting unstuck before I am from the million dollar game because YouTube revenue has never been lower. Actually, it has been lower, but anyway, that's that. If you want to check out Hustlers live stream, I'll put a link in the description below. And if you're interested in my new heads up course, the end boss system is now available over on upswingpoker.com. See you guys.